Again, to start this out, I'll say hello. My name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydro hydrologic engineer with the Risk Management Center. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss flow frequency, um, specifically relative frequency and empirical plotting positions. Um, I want to give recognition to the Hydrologic Engineering Center, who produced many of the slides and figures that are used in this presentation, originally from their prospect training classes. Let's get started here. So our learning objectives are to define plotting positions and describe how they are used, um, discuss relative frequency and understand how it is calculated. We're going to define and understand probability density functions, or PDFs, and cumulative distribution functions, or CDFs. Um, we're going to demonstrate how to calculate and plot empirical plotting positions, and we're going to describe the hearst stedinger plotting positions that are defined in Bulletin 17C. Um, and as we're working through some of these slides, you're going to see some things you're not used to, maybe some axes or plots that just don't look quite right, like what you're used to flood frequency. So basically, we're going to try to start from a more statistical point and take steps to move into the types of plots and analysis you're seeing. So just hang with me and we'll get there. Um, but we're going to start with plotting positions. Um, they are an estimate of the probability for an observed event. Um, they can be used to define an empirical frequency curve for flow frequency analysis. And they are commonly used to visually compare to an analytical flow frequency curve. Plotting positions have uncertainty. Does everybody hear that? Plotting positions do have uncertainty. But we never show that on a plot, right? We just show the points. All right. So the following slides will present an overview of probability concepts and show how we get from data to plotting positions. So relative frequency is a very simple but effective method of estimating probability from observations. Outcomes that are more probable occur more frequently, right? So as an estimator, relative frequency improves as the number of observations increase. Unfortunately, the natural systems that we work in usually provide us with a very limited number of observations that we can only increase with more time. So again, estimated probability and relative frequency is number of occurrences divided by the number of ind independent trials. All right, so this is an example data set of the annual maximum flow value for each year for an 85 year period of record. Um, note that this is a continuous random variable because flow can be any value in the range of, of probability for each year. So we just got 85 peak annual flow data points. One way to view the variable probabilistically is to discretize the range of and produce a histogram like you see on the chart here. We see higher bars where there are more occurrences, implying a higher probability of those values. So the histogram is an estimate of the probability density function, or PDF. So to obtain relative frequency, we divide the count over a range of flows by the total number of observations. For example, we have 15 occurrences in the 2000 to 3000 CFS bin, which we divide by the total number of observations, which is 85. So 15 divided by 85, which equals 0.18 or 18%. So placing observations in intervals or classes and calculating relative frequency results in a histogram of the observations, like we just saw. As the number of observations becomes very large and the intervals that we use become very small, the histogram approaches the probability density function for a continuous random variable. So the green PDF that's plotted here is a parent population. The purple histogram represents a very large sample from that population. So this is intended to show that for a very large sample, the histogram approaches the PDF. The area under the probability density function is probability, which means the area under the entire curve is equal to 1. All right, also histograms can be accumulated for continuous random variables and are an estimate of the cumulative distribution function, or the CDF. So this is the cumulative histogram of the sample of those 85 values as a count in the middle here and as relative frequency on the right. So the original histogram is also provided for reference on the left that we were looking at on the previous slides to help show how the cumulative histogram was calculated. So we see on the histogram, the first two intervals have values of five and eight. So on the cumulative count, they add together to 13 for that range of flows. That cumulative value are again divided by the total observations of 85 to get the cumulative frequency of 0.15.
All right, so similarly, the green CDF is a parent population, and the purple cumulative histogram represents, again, a very large sample from that population. So this shows that for a very large sample, the cumulative histogram approaches the CDF. However, the cumulative histogram is not the ideal representation of the CDF. A better estimate for the CDF involves plotting all the data points rather than trying to condense them into a histogram that uses flow ranges. Um, it generalizes the histogram idea by assuming the bins are sized such that there is one value per bin. So this is the sample of 85 values shown here. The vertical lines are an approximation of showing this as a form of a cumulative histogram. But we only show it for a couple, but in practice, we would have a single histogram bar for each of our 85 peak annual data points. In this method of estimating the CDF, the axes are switched to put the variable on the vertical and the frequency on the horizontal. Note that the cumulative frequency increases by the same amount with each event because the count of events equal to or below that value is increasing by one each time. So each year of data, we're just increasing by one. Next, the, formerly, the former linear probability frequency axis has now been turned into a normal probability axis. Um, note that this axis scaling brings the values in the middle closer together than the ones at the tails farther apart. Um, normally distributed data will plot as a straight line on a normal probability axis. The normal probability axis is scaled based on the normal PDF that can be seen sitting on the horizontal axis down here. So starting on the left, the value on the axis represents the area under the PDF that has been accumulated up to that point. So 5% of the area has been accumulated to the left of where the axis shows 5. 50% has been accumulated to the left of where the axis shows 50. So in general, we're using relative frequency to estimate the probability of being less than a certain value by how often the observations were less than that value for our available data. The probability estimate by relative frequency is called a plotting position because it defines where to plot the observation on the probability axis. This equation represents a non-exceedance plotting position. So just what rank we're in divided by the total number of data points that we have. The next adjustment we're going to do is switch from the probability of being less than or equal to to the probability of being greater than. We do this by sorting our data from high to low. So M now represents the number of values greater than. So we switch from non-exceedance on the previous slide's equation to exceedance plotting position on this, side, this slide. So the x-axis is now exceedance probability, the probability of being greater than, but has been reversed so that zero is on the right now. Note that the largest sample member plots as the largest in 85 years and plots at approximately one in 85 or an AEP of around 0.012. The second largest is 2 divided by 85, or an AEP of approximately 0 0.024. So each sample member plots at the relative frequency of exceedance of its value defined by its rank in the sample. So since either the largest or the smallest event will have a rank of m equal to n, depending on how you're looking at it, the simple m over n plotting position can equal 1, right? So for non-exceedance, this implies that it's impossible to have an event larger than our largest recorded flood, which is not a good assumption. Or if we're looking at exceedance, the assumption that we can't have an event smaller than the smallest observed event we have is also problematic. So either way, this outcome is going to imply bias in all of our plotting positions, which we don't want. There are many other plotting positions that have been derived using M and N that have good properties. Um, Weibull and median are commonly used, and they both avoid being able to get values that are equal to one. Um, the uncertainty in plotting position for the nth flood follows a beta distribution. So given repeated samples of n flood observations, the largest observation will have an AEP of m divided by n plus one on average. So the Weibull formula that we see here gives the exact value of the mean of, a beta, of that beta distribution. The equation for median plotting position is an approximation of the median for the beta distribution. So again, remember, we often use Weibull. It's the mean estimate of the probability for the beta distribution. That's important. All right, so now let's talk about Hirsch-Steggs or plotting positions. These are threshold exceedance-based plotting positions. 
and they take into account perception thresholds to inform plotting positions. So if both in 17C, we can now incorporate these perception thresholds. So we had to have a way to take that into account when we're calculating plotting positions. So these calculations are described in Appendix 5 of both in 17C, and they are used in the RMC Best Fit software. The formula shown here calculates the plotting positions for floods that exceed the perception threshold. In this equation on the screen, n is the total number of years covered by the systematic, historic, and perception thresholds, so your total record length. Um, k is the number of floods that exceed the perception threshold. The alpha variable is a plotting position parameter defined for different plotting position methods with different options seen in the RMC best fit input properties drop down menu here. So it's important. It's, we're using Hirsch studies for plotting positions, but we also get to pick a method like Weibel or Median or Blom, et cetera, to use with the Hirsch settings or calculations. An alpha value of zero corresponds to a Weibel formula and is a recommended default value because like we said in the last slide, the Weibel plotting position corrects for bias and is the mean of the sampling distribution. Um, I in this equation is an index value with one being the largest flood that exceeds the, th the perception threshold, two being the second largest flood that exceeds the threshold, et cetera. Um, note that the rest of the systematic data below the threshold is adjusted as well and uses a different equation, which is conceptually similar, but has a few more steps. And if we have multiple thresholds, there's additional calculations that are completed as part of the Hearst studying or plotting positions. All right, so I, I told you we'd start somewhere and we'd end up back with what we're used to seeing. So our final axis adjustment for flow frequency is typically to put the y-axis stream flow on a log axis. Often this brings the plotted data closer to a straight line, which we call linearization, which would imply a log normal distribution or something close to that. Um, in the case of this example data, they made it look better without the log y-axis. So when we switch to log, we do get a more curved or a negative skewed curve there. All right, so, so far, we've done an empirical analysis in which we've looked only at the data set itself and made no further assumptions. Um, the next step is estimating an analytical probability distribution for this data, which is shown as the green line on this plot. All right, so another example shows the plotting positions not matching perfectly with the analytical flow frequency curve. And this again demonstrates the plotting position uncertainty, especially with the largest observations, which have very large plotting position uncertainty. This should be kept in mind when visually comparing plotting positions to analytical frequency curves. They're not always going to match up perfectly because we have uncertainty in them. All right, so unlike unregulated peak annual flow data, Peak annual stage data typically does not fit an analytical distribution because stages are sensitive to geometry changes, storage, and other factors in our reservoirs or on our rivers. But we can use empirical plotting positions, which are an empirical estimate of annual exceedance probability, which we just talked about for flow frequency, to estimate an annual exceedance probability for each observed peak annual stage. Extrapolation of empirical curves is dangerous and should be avoided. We typically only want to use analytical curves for extrapolation, which we don't do with stages. So notice for stages, we're still plotting on the normal probability x-axis, but we're using a linear y-axis for stage since it typically does not linearize with log transform like the flow does. And notice that we're not fitting a distribution through these points to extrapolate to higher stages or less frequent AEPs than what has been observed. This just establishes estimates for annual exceedance probabilities for the observed data points that we have. Um, in this example, there's 52 years of peak annual stages. The highest stage is calculated as its rank number one, divided by the number of years of data 52 plus one. The second highest stage is calculated with its rank two in the numerator, and then we keep the same denominator. So we're adding one to the denominator again because we're using the typically recommended Weibel plotting position for stage, as again, it corrects for bias because it's the mean of the sampling distribution. All right, so we've added historic data now from 1957 as interval data, and we've added a perception threshold using knowledge that the stage representing the best estimate for 1957 was not exceeded since the year 1868. For plotting positions to account for that perception threshold information, additional calculations are completed. Um, we can talk again about the Hearst-Danger plotting positions and what they are. 
the formula is going to account for these just like we talked about for flow. And it takes into account how many points we have above our threshold, et cetera. And again, for the data points that are below the threshold, there's a different but similar calculation completed. And if we have multiple thresholds, it again gets more complicated. Um, note that adding the historic data and perception threshold changed the plotting position significantly. So we were, our biggest flood was at about 1 in 50, and now we're at about 1 in 225 AEP. So this is important because it can be used to inform and assess the goodness of fit of flow frequency translated to stage frequency curves, and we'll discuss that topic in a later presentation. Okay, so in summary, um, plotting positions are an estimate of the probability of an observed event. We're, they're commonly used to compare visually to our analytical flow frequency. Um, relative frequency histograms approach the parent population, which is either the PDF or the CDF, as the sample becomes very large. Um, Hearst studies or plotting positions take perception thresholds into account and are used in RMC best fit software. And again, we defined plotting positions. Um, we discussed relative frequency. We defined and got an understanding for probability density and cumulative distribution function, functions. We demonstrated how to plot the empirical plotting positions. And again, we described her studying for plotting positions.